What's going on folks? I'm Lee and this is the Brock Automotive Channel. Today we're working on my 2016 Ford F-150 with the 3.5 liter EcoBoost engine and direct fuel injection. One problem with the direct fuel injection engines is that it gets carbon built up on the back of the valves and in the intake passage because there's no gas to keep that stuff clean. In older model fuel injection systems like a multi-port system, you have fuel, gasoline, that actually sprays on the back of the valve and keeps them pretty well washed off of carbon. These direct injection motors, the fuel gets sprayed directly into the cylinder and doesn't touch the intake valve. You have carbon build up on the valves. It can lead to things like loss of power, rough idle, a um, little bit of loss of fuel economy. So today we're going to clean mine up with this STP intake valve cleaner. It says Pro Series up here. It's supposed to be good stuff. There is some other videos on YouTube of folks using this stuff and it looks like it does a pretty good job. I'm going to try it out today on mine. So step one of the process here says that we need to idle the engine for approximately five minutes to get it warmed up a little bit, then shut it off. Then we're going to hook our cleaner into the system and we'll go from there. All right, so we've got everything mostly warmed up now. This truck's got about 74,000 miles on it. I don't know that this has ever been done. Uh, I bought the truck with 62,000 miles on it and I know I've never done it. So STP recommends uh, you do this once a year, I think. That's what they say on their package. Um, as I said, 3.5 EcoBoost. The connection we need to take apart is right here on the throttle body. So the silver part is your throttle body. That's where the air goes into your engine. And we need to take this clamp off right here, this first clamp. Um, to get this boot off the throttle body and we're going to stick our end of our cleaner in there We'll see that a little bit better here in a second All right, so let's get the box open see what's inside here what this looks like Fella probably ought to read the directions here Turn the red switch to I before turning the blue switch to I. Okay. So this is the little nozzle here that goes inside of our air intake. It says professional grade results, helps avoid costly engine teardown, improves engine performance for use in GDI, PFI, and turbo gasoline engines. Well, we're working on two of the three here today. Kind of a flimsy little hose that comes with the can, but it does have an aluminum piece over the plastic hose where you're going to put this into the throttle body. So in the directions it says you remove that boot we just looked at, you put this into the throttle body and then you slide the boot back over top of this. Then we're going to run the engine while this cleaner sprays into the engine. Alright folks, I've got you propped up where I think you might be able to see what we're trying to do here. Again, this silver part is the throttle body. That's where your butterfly valve is. When you step on the gas pedal, there's a valve inside here that opens and closes depending on how much you're pressing on the gas pedal and allows air into your engine. All right, so the directions say we have to loosen this clamp up and put our the end of our nozzle in there. Come on, baby. Come on there. All right, so we'll run this around here. Up in the amp like that. Now we have to put the hose back on the throttle body because if we don't, it's going to be getting a lot of unmetered air that isn't going to go past the mass airflow sensor, and that's going to cause it to run really badly while we're doing this. All right. All right, so I got that back on there the way they want it. Tighten your clamp back down. You got a fancy little hook to hang this up here on the, the hood latch. Keeps the cord and everything out of the way, out of the fan or belt, whatever might be in the way. All right, so we've got our can hanging up here by the hood latch. Got the hose out of the way of everything. 
we're on to step three here which says we need to turn these knobs the blue knob here or I'm sorry red knob here and there's a blue knob on top we need to turn both of those to face the eye then within one minute we need to get inside the truck start it up and hold the throttle at three times the engine's normal idle uh, the normal idle on idle on this truck is somewhere around 700 so I figure if we hold it about 2100 rpm we should be right where we need to be all right so I got our knobs turned where they're supposed to be I figured out the red knob is kind of like a timer uh, when I turned it and let go of it it started clicking off almost like a kitchen timer so we're going to hold the rpm somewhere between 2000 and 2500 the box also says that the cleaner will begin spraying in approximately one minute after you turn the knobs. So I guess that gives you time to get in the truck and get everything started and all that good stuff. I don't know if the cleaner started working yet. I assume it has, but I kind of thought maybe the engine would start running differently when the cleaner started spraying as well. The engine still sounds nice and normal just like it always does so so the box says this takes nine minutes we sit here like this for nine minutes and then uh, okay we're she's idling down a little bit now okay so I'm gonna set a nine minute timer I'll be back in nine minutes all right so we got about three minutes left here on our cleaning process what is your what is y'all's opinion on cleaners like this um, you think they work you think it's just a way to make money um, seafoam berryman's uh, marble mystery oil there's a lot of different cleaners um, for both your gas your fuel injectors your fuel system and stuff that you put inside the engine to clean out varnish or sludge or whatever else may be inside your crankcase so i'm just kind of curious to know what everybody else's opinion on is on um, is that stuff worth it is it any good and if so you know what what do you use do you use it on a regular schedule you know every oil change every tank of gas do you just kind of throw it in whenever you happen to think about it um, go down in the comments and tell me what your preferences are and how you do it at your house all right so the nine minutes is up uh, next step is to shut the truck off go out here remove the hose from the throttle body put the hose back on like it belongs and then it says to take the truck or car for a 10 to 15 minute drive to make sure that all the cleaner inside the engine and everything is is out um, while I was doing the process for the nine minutes I didn't notice any smoke or anything coming from the exhaust so I think we'll take it out here and get on it one time and kind of see if anything comes out the exhaust, some black chunks or some kind of smoke or something. Um, the stuff that it cleaned out had to go somewhere and I would think that it would give us some kind of smoke if it's getting burnt and going out the exhaust pipe. Let me put this back together and we'll see. All right, we're getting ready to go for the test drive and to get the shop all closed up and everything put away i've been having some robo call telemarketer or something or another from missouri i'm in kentucky but the same number calls every day between 6 15 and 7 o'clock in the evening it's from missouri and when you answer it it's just a robo call that asks you to press one if you plan on voting in the november election two if you plan on not voting and I don't listen much past that, but I have listened long enough to realize that there's no option to um, get them to stop calling. Like sometimes you can press, you know, five or nine or whatever it is to opt out of future calls. They don't have that. And they can every day, twice a day. All right. So as luck would have it, I've waited too long. To go on the test drive it's mostly dark outside and i can't see the exhaust coming out of the tailpipe in my mirror to see if there's going to be any smoke or not so far everything seems perfectly normal okay 
so it started to go kind of fell on its face and it absolutely clouded the road behind me with white smoke or maybe not smoke I guess but steam something or another come out of the tailpipe is what I'm getting at all right some somebody ain't happy here that was to the floor the whole time it kind of did the same thing as far as get up and go stumble fall on its face now we've got a pretty good shake going almost like a misfire you can see we have the flash and check engine light there she's definitely chugging and shaking and of course with the flash and check engine light I would assume it's a misfire right now it seems pretty smooth it doesn't really feel like we have a miss right now as you can see the lights went out I have a feeling that cleaner just kind of puddled up in the intake somewhere and now that we're giving her the beans it's sucking down big gulps of it all at the same time I'm gonna get on it again here and see what it does this time oh yeah we've got all the horses pulling this time oh yeah didn't see any smoke at all out the exhaust so we may have it cleaned out good now I think I'm going to continue down to the end of this road about another five or six minutes and then by the time we get back down to the shop, the 10 to 15 minute test drive will be completed. Um, I think we're going to hook up the scan tool, see what the code was, clear it out, maybe take a look at what our fuel trims are doing and kind of go from there. Okay folks, so I've been out driving for a few minutes here. Um, the drivability problems we were having there a minute ago with the, the falling on its face, the mist, the check engine light flashing, all those things are gone now. Like I said, I think it just got some cleaner puddled up somewhere, took a big drink of it there when we started driving, overly rich, and that's kind of where all those problems came from. I've done several, and what I mean by several is probably six or eight full throttle poles here from about 20 miles an hour. And this thing pulls like a Clydesdale now. Um, seat of the pants, much, much better than it was before we did the cleaning. I didn't do any zero to 60 times or anything like that before to have numbers to compare to, but just seat of the pants, she's strong, stronger than it was before. Um, I think what I'm gonna do mile per gallon wise is go off of the data I've got here in the dash. Um, over the last 1,739 miles, I've averaged 22.8 miles to the gallon. Um, I drive pretty much the same routine all the time, back and forth to work, back and forth to town, occasionally out on the highway going somewhere. So I think that will probably be the best, um, the best way to measure if we've got any mile per gallon increase. You know, I can, I can measure it in the short term over the next 100 miles or whatever, but how do I know I'm not babying the throttle a little bit more than I did before or, you know, driving either more in the city or more on the highway than I did before and skewing the results that way. So I'm going to reset this trip one computer and then that way over the next several hundred miles or maybe a thousand miles, whenever I remember to look at it, we'll see, you know, what the mileage is then and kind of compare it before and after. All right, I think I'm gonna give you a little preview of the acceleration I was talking about. Got a pretty straight stretch here for a minute. So, get her rolling a little bit. Like I said, it pulls a lot harder than what I remember it pulling before. Um, I kind of baby this truck though. I don't really, I don't really go around giving it all the beans that I can all the time. Uh, I'm getting older now, and I'm kind of one of them guys that would rather baby it and see how good a gas mileage I can get, as to as opposed to how fast I can get it to go. But 
like I keep saying, it does pull harder than what I remember now. Um, so whether that's true or whether that's just kind of, you know, I did something to the engine, so I expect it to be better than it was, and therefore I feel like it's better than it was. I, if it's a situation like that, I really don't know. All right, so we're back from the test drive. Truck ran great. Uh, after that little moment at the beginning of the test drive when it was spitting and sputtering and the check engine light was flashing, after it cleared up from that, ran great the rest of the test drive. Great power, it seemed like. Like you saw in the video, I reset the fuel mileage on the trip one and we'll drive it for a few hundred or a thousand miles and we'll see how it goes. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, check out my other videos, leave me some likes and some comments on what we can do better, what you'd like to see us do in the future. And thanks for watching. Have a great night.